This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how to create this abstract 3D cube concept using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So the first thing we will do in Inkscape is set our view to custom and then we're going to zoom in at 100%. Then we'll open up our Align and Distribute menu with this button over here. Make sure you have Last Selected chosen from this drop-down. And then we will open up our Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our cube. So we're, we're going to do that by going to the Stars and Polygons tool. Make sure you have Polygons selected. Make sure the corners are set to 6. And then both rounded, uh, rounded and Randomized are, are both set to 0. And once you've done that, just bring the cursor over to the canvas, hold Control and Shift on the keyboard, and click and drag to create a polygon like this. Make sure the corners are going up and down like that, and that it is not sitting flat like that. You want it looking like that. And once we get there, we can go back, we can go to our Select tool. We could take the opacity and drop this down about in half. And then we'll come up here to our Snap to Cusp nodes and turn that on. And we're going to right click this and go to duplicate. We'll turn that red. And we're going to grab this red copy down by the bottom left corner and click and drag and snap it onto the top left corner over here. And we'll right click that and go to duplicate. We'll turn that blue. And we'll grab this top left corner of the blue copy and click and drag and snap that onto the bottom corner of the red polygon. And once we've done that, let's click on the black polygon. We'll right click that and go to Duplicate, and then hold Shift and click on the red shape and go to Path, Intersection. Then we'll click on this black polygon again, right click, Duplicate, hold Shift, click on the blue polygon and go to Path, Intersection. And then what we'll do next is we'll grab our Bezier pen and starting at the bottom left corner over here, snap the cursor onto that corner and click and then bring that line up to the top left corner and click and bring it over to this corner click bring it over here click and then snap it back to the starting point and click to complete the shape and it's important that you start at the bottom left uh, corner and then work clock clockwise like I just did here or else what we're going to do moving forward will not work so once we've done that let's go to our select tool and let's click on this black polygon here, the original one. And once you have that selected, press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And then we can click and drag over this entire object right here. And we can just move this off to the side for now. And then we'll go to our uh, Create uh, Squares and Rectangles tool. Hold Control and Shift on the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly symmetrical square like that. And then we'll go to our, uh, our Select tool. And we're going to turn on this lock icon between the two number inputs. Just turn that on. And whatever the width is over here, just erase that. Click and drag over it to highlight it. Whatever that number is, just write in 200 and hit enter. And that'll make that a 200 by 200 pixel square. And what we'll do next is we'll right click this and go to duplicate. We'll turn that copy black. And then we will turn our lock icon off. And go over to the height. And let's erase that and put in 50. So it's a 200 by 50 square like that. And then we'll right click that and duplicate it. And then we'll right click it and duplicate it again. So we're making two duplicated copies. Then we'll hold shift, click on the blue shape. And let's come over here to where it says align top edges. We'll align the top edges together. And then we'll click on this other black rectangle that we created. Hold shift, click on the blue shape. And let's center that on the horizontal axis so we have those three rectangles going in here inside of that blue uh, square. And once you've done that, let's click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And let's click on just this bottom one and then hold shift and click on the other two so we have all three of them selected. And we'll go to Path, Union. And then we're going to click this a second time to get the rotation handles. And while holding control on the keyboard, Grab this top right corner and click and drag this around until the top and bottom corners are going perfectly vertical like that. And then we'll come back up here to our lock icon. We're going to turn that back on. 
And we're going to change the width of this to 500. So hit 500 and hit enter. So we end up with that. And then we're going to hold shift on the keyboard and click on that blue square. And we're going to make sure that that is centered on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. And then we will go to path intersection. So we end up with this shape here. And we're going to take that shape and turn that black. And then we're going to hold shift on the keyboard and click on this uh, black outline that we just drew a few minutes ago. And we'll go to extension, modify path, uh, perspective. And that'll take that shape and put it inside of that box using the perspective tool. So now that we've done that, we can come, we can take this thing, click and drag over all of it and bring it back to the center of the screen. We're going to work with this a little more. What we're going to do now is we're going to turn on our snap to paths as well. So we have both the snap to paths and the snap to cusp nodes turned on. And what we're going to do is grab the bezier pen and let's snap it onto this corner down here. And then hold control and bring this line straight across, but up maybe two, I think it's two steps. You want the line running parallel with the edge of the blue shape. As you can see, this red line is running parallel. And we do that by holding control. And once you bring the line to the edge, go ahead and once it snaps, go ahead and click. And then we can let go of control, bring the line up to this corner and click. Snap it onto this corner and then connect it back to the starting point. And then we're going to turn that black. And then we will turn the stroke off by holding shift and clicking the X button. And we'll take the opacity of that and drop that down about in half. So what we'll do now is we'll snap the cursor onto this shape right here, onto this corner here, and click, and hold control to bring the line parallel with the blue, with the edge of the blue shape. And once it snaps that edge, click. And then we can let go of control, snap it onto this corner, and click, snap it onto that corner, and then snap this onto here, back to the starting point. And we'll turn that black. We'll turn the stroke off by holding shift and clicking on the X button. And then we could take the opacity and bring that down about in half as well. So what we'll do now is we're going to do something similar up here with this corner. We're going to snap to this corner, hold control so the line comes parallel, touches the edge, and then click. We'll let go of control, bring the line to this corner and click. Then we'll bring the line to this corner and click. And we'll connect it back to the starting point. Like that. And then we will turn that black hold shift, click on the X to get rid of the, uh, the black outline. And we're going to take the opacity and drop that in half as well. And then finally, we will do that one more time with this corner up here. So let's snap onto this corner and click and hold control, bring the line parallel, snap and click, snap it onto here, and then snap it onto here, connect it back to the starting point. So we end up with that shape, we're going to turn that black as well. Hold shift on the keyboard, click on the X to get rid of the outline, and drop the opacity, of course. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw another shape going inside of here. So we're going to start at this corner up here, and then click, and then bring this line down to this corner over here, and then click, and then bring this line over to this corner, and then bring this one over to this corner, and connect that back to the starting point. But and instead of making this black, we're going to make this green. And we'll turn the stroke off by holding shift and clicking on the X. And then we're going to send that to the bottom. We're actually going to click on the select tool first. And then we'll click on lower selection to the bottom to send that to the bottom. And then we're going to go back to our bezier pen. And let's, let's grab this corner over here and snap and click. And then bring the line up to this corner over here. Snap and click then bring it down to this corner and then this corner and then back to the starting point like that and we'll turn that green we'll turn the stroke off by holding shift and clicking the X and then we'll send that to the bottom by going back to our select tool and clicking the button up here that says lower selection to the bottom and once we've done that let's click on uh, this black outline over here click on that so you have that selected and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And then we'll click on this blue shape over here. And you'll know you have it selected when you see the blue stripe in the bottom left. Once you have that selected, press uh, delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And then we'll click on this red shape and then press delete 
and get rid of that as well. And what we'll do now is we're going to click and drag over this entire thing and bring the opacity all the way up. And then we could deselect, we could turn off the snap to cusp nodes and the snap to paths. And let's deselect everything with this button up here. Deselect any object selected. And there we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab this black object over here to the left, like this one right here. And once you have that selected, let's give that a base color. I'm just going to go with like a, um, a fuchsia, I guess, for this one. I'll go with this color here. And then I'll click on this black shape and then hold shift and click on that black shape and go to path union. So that's all one shape. And I'm going to press F7 on the keyboard to get the dropper tool. And I'm going to click on this, this fuchsia section right here to make this the same shade. But once I do that, I'm going to come over here to the fill tab and under the HSL tab, I'm going to come down to the L column and slide this over to the left to make this a little darker. Maybe about that much. And then we can go back to our select tool, we'll click on that. Let's click on this black shape right here and then hold shift and click on that black shape right there so we have them both selected and go to path, union. And then we'll press F7 on the keyboard to get our dropper. Let's click on this uh, fuchsia section again to make that the same shade. Only this time we're gonna make this one a little bit lighter. So let's come down to the L column and drag this off to the right a little bit to make that a little lighter. Maybe about that much. And then what we could do is let's go back to our select tool. Let's click on this green section right here. You'll know you have it selected when you see the green stripe in the bottom left corner. And let's press F7 to get our dropper. And let's make this the same dark shade that this is right here, this dark shade. Only we're going to go to the L column and drag that off to the left a little bit to make that a little darker, maybe about that much. And then we'll go back to our select tool. And let's click on this green shape right here. And press F7 on the keyboard to get back to the dropper. And we're going to make that the same dark shade that this is right here. So there you have that. And then we can go back to our select tool. And let's click off of the graphic to deselect everything. So now, you, as you can see, we have this in a pretty much a, a, a flat a flat color sort of style. What I'm going to do now is add a little bit of gradient to this to make this pop a little more. And the way I'm going to go about doing that is clicking on this left piece right here, this original one that we colored in. Let's click on that. And let's come over to the Fill tab and let's click on this button that says Linear Gradient. And then we'll press, we'll bring the cursor onto the page and press G on the keyboard, the letter G, and that'll bring up the gradient tool. And you're going to see this line coming through the object right here. Let's click on this node to the right so it selects it. And once you select it, you'll be able to change the color over here. So I'm going to come down to the A column and I'm going to bring that all the way to the right. And then I'll come up to the L column and bring that to the right a little bit to make that a little lighter to give that a gradient. And then I'll take that node and I'll bring it up here to the top. And then I'll take this bottom one and bring this to the bottom. And once I get it towards the bottom, I'm going to hold control on the keyboard so it goes straight up and down, just like that. And then let's click on this top object up here, the lighter one. Let's click on that. Let's give that a linear gradient as well. And then let's click on this node all the way to the right. And let's take the A column and bring that to the right. And let's take the L column and bring that to the right too. Almost, almost white really really light maybe about that much and then we'll take this node and bring this over here to this end of the of the uh, shape and then take this node and bring this over here to the back end so we have it set up like that and what I'll do next is click on this dark shape to the far right give that a linear gradient let's click on this node bring the a column all the way up and then I'm going to take the L column and I'm going to make this one darker instead of lighter. I'm going to bring this down a little bit, maybe about that much. And then I'll take this node and I'll put this at the bottom down here. And I'll take this node and bring this to the top. And then I'll hold control while I'm doing that so it goes perfectly up and down like that. And then we'll click on this very dark pink object right here. And we'll give that a linear gradient as well. Let's click on this one, bring the, uh, the A column all, to, all the way to the right, and let's make this one slightly lighter, maybe about this much. And once we've done that, we can take this node and put it towards the top left corner of that shape, and then take this node and bring it towards the bottom left corner of that shape. 
And I'm actually going to darken that up a little more, just so it stands out a little bit. Maybe about that much. And that's pretty good, just like that. And then finally, we can click on this dark shade right here. And we're going to give that the same gradient that we gave this one. So we're just going to click on the um, linear gradient. And then we'll go to the drop-down menu and choose that most recent gradient we just created. And we'll take the dark end and put that at the bottom. And we'll take the lighter end and put that at the top. And then we can go back to our select tool. We can click and drag over this entire thing and group it together. And we are now finished. We have created our 3D cube concept using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.